All right. Well, we'd like to welcome everybody out to our UPA Live. Uh, we're real excited to have you here uh, and excited for Robert to be able to share what he's learned with the, about Tether Tools and trying out the equipment. Uh, just a reminder, uh, we do archive all these UPA Live and also we have the videos from the symposium speakers. They are at University Photog, our UPAA YouTube channel. Um, we also have playlists of all the UPAA Lives, so you can go check those out. Um, also today there's a special promotion and we're grateful for Roberts for, for working with Tether Tools on this. Uh, you get 20% off all Tether Tools products till October 22nd. Uh, and we'll, we'll share this uh, slide at the end again after you've seen all the products, uh, but we're excited for that. So, uh, and then we also have a few people uh, from Tether Tools with us, Liz, Scott, and Lauren. And then uh, from Roberts, we have John Scott. Uh, they'll be here to answer any questions. Uh, in fact, let's just, if you have any questions, just go ahead and throw those in the chat. And then um, we'll, we'll have some questions probably while we're, we're talking too, but uh, please, we'd love to hear from you and hear what you wanna learn about. And so with that, we go, go ahead, we're gonna have it introduce Robert Jordan. Uh, we're excited to have him with us today. And, and Robert, tell us about what you're gonna talk about. How you doing? Well, uh, I've been a university photographer from 1984 to 2017 when I retired and a UPA member since the mid to, to late 80s. Um, this organization has done more for my career than anything else. The networking opportunities are phenomenal and the UPA Brain Trust, uh, I can't overstate uh, how the importance of that. And having companies like Roberts, uh, Camera and Tether Tools uh, support us uh, just makes this a no brainer. If you're a university photographer, you need to be in this organization. Um, I am very new to Zoom meetings, so please bear with me. And uh, uh, normally I do these reviews uh, in written format, so this is my first video review. Uh, I'll try to do my best. Um, I say I also want to shout out to Tether Tools Roberts Camera for the awesome 20% discount for UPA members. Uh, I'm going to cut to the chase here and give you a little sneak peek or a sneak preview and say, at the very least, look at your camera, figure out what kind of USB port it has on it, and go to Tether Tools and get the appropriate cable. And it really is worth the extra money buying the Tether Tools cables. They're much better shielded than most cables and they're much more durable. Buy this. Buy the jerk stopper for your camera, whichever you prefer, and uh, get the software. It's a no-brainer for a little over a hundred bucks. Might be pretty close to a hundred dollars with the discount. So there's your spoiler alert. Get the Smart Shooter 4 software and Tether Tools cable at the very minimum. Well, we're we're in an election cycle, so I think the jerk stopper is something we could all use. <laughs> Absolutely, uh, it, it doesn't work on bosses, I'm told. Oh, but you know. We can always hope. And thank you, Jaron, for hosting this and uh, uh, keeping it light. Uh, all right, so Tether Tools was very generous and sent me a boatload of stuff to test out. And so I'm going to kind of break this review down and talk about each of the separate things uh, individually. Uh, I received from them an Air Direct wireless tethering system, a pro tethering kit, which is this right here, nice little tabletop, and Smart Shooter 4 software. Uh, I'm going to start with the Pro Tethering System. Um, this is a system that mounts to a light stand or tripod. It's just this top here. I've got it on a sort of run-of-the-mill um, light stand, and I'd seen photos of this before, and I'd always thought I'm never going to get one of those things. Um, well, because it looked insubstantial. And I was very wrong. This thing is very solid. I've spent about three days using it uh, while shooting photos on a freelance job. Uh, so I've spent about 16, 18 hours using this thing, and it is a, a game changer. Um, let's see here. What you, they offer a pro kit right here. And uh, what you get in the pro kit is this aluminum top with pro pad, nice soft pad here. Uh, you get an adjustable strap that you strap your laptop down with, and they really engineered this perfectly. You push this all the way up against the hinge on your MacBook Pro, and you can still access the touch bar. So kudos for getting that right. It also does not get in the way of the USB port. So great job on that. Uh, let's see. It has an optional, or I'm sorry, it's including the Pro Kit, optional otherwise, 
a compartment here that mounts under the table that holds an external two and a half inch hard drive. Again, great idea. You receive cable clips, which clip to the edge of the table and keep your cables in order. You also receive a USB jerk stopper. Uh, you attach this to the bottom edge of the table, run your USB cable through there. If the cable gets yanked, you won't damage the port on your computer. Great invention there. Uh, let's see. There's a, you receive this neoprene and Velcro uh, strap that you can strap your uh, laptop power supply or a USB power supply or something else. You can strap it to the leg of the tripod or monopod, frees up some desk space there and you don't have things hanging. Uh, you also get a storage bag, a carry pouch uh, that all this will fit into. And my personal favorite, the collapsible cup holder because you got to have your Starbucks handy when you're working. That just goes right up underneath the table there and disappears when you don't need it. Um, I guess it'll hold probably two shot glasses if you're having that kind of assignment. So uh, the kit, the Pro Kit, is really awesome. It's solid. It makes a great portable workstation. Looking at it, you wouldn't think it would be that great or that solid, but it is really incredible, guys. Uh, they also sent me another accessory I highly recommend. This has wheels on it. It goes underneath your light stand or tripod. It adds some, some weight to the bottom, which is nice. And of course, you can wheel it around. You can lock the wheels in place. Um, like I say, I've been working on a project with the university museums uh, to uh, digitize their entire collection. And uh, setting everything up on the laptop and being able to wheel it from, from place to place is just really awesome. Uh, it's well worth it. And just like the top, here's the bag that comes of the top, the wheel comes with its own carrying pouch. Um, this stuff, it reminds me a lot of think tank camera bags. You get the feeling these are made by photographers for photographers. It's, it's um, the, the thoughtfulness that goes into this is really impressive. Um, everything assembles quickly and breaks down and stores pretty compactly. And so you might really want to consider it um, if you don't already have a great workspace to work off of. So any questions on that system? Yeah, uh, first of all, what, what's everything, when you did your shoots, what did you put on the tripod table? What, what did you okay. say, your laptop? I have my 15 inch um, laptop, a MacBook Pro, strap it down. We had a, a two and a half inch Lacey hard drive, which those giant orange things, uh, it fit into the little compartment very nicely. So I've got that coming in to the left side of the laptop. I've got my uh, power coming in on the left side. And I was doing a two external hard drive setup. So I had a small um, Western Digital hard drive also connected to my laptop. And then the last remaining port on the laptop was my USB tether. And so um, I don't know, I, I wanna say they might make it, but a, a welcome feature I would like to see is a double under table um, USB drive holder. I don't know if they, if they have that or not. So that yes, was one of do. my little uh, questions there. We, yeah. we do have that. Okay. okay, I thought I remembered seeing it. Yeah, you can get a single or a double. Okay, yeah, a double uh, would have been awesome, but the single was very, very helpful. Uh, it leaves you enough workspace uh, to still have a mouse and, and um, mouse, a mouse pad and a little bit of elbow room and, and it frees up workspace great. I'd love to have had that double one. And Scott, it, it, we are seeing that there are several different sizes of the tables. How many different sizes are there? Um, there's three main ones. There's a, a, a master one, which is the largest. There's a middle one and then there's a traveler one, which is the smallest. And um, then there's also three that are specifically made for three different uh, MacBook Pro sizes, the 17, the 15, and the 13. Oh, awesome. Well, lots of good options there. Good. And then Robert, um, also, oh, oh, Glenn Carpenter is asking the price. What it, what's the price of the setup that, that Robert's working with? The, the Pro Kit. Yeah, I don't know the price since I, I didn't purchase it, but this is 
this is a box it came in. And I know the, I guess I know it's on the website. Yeah, and it's 20% off. So uh, go over to Robert's and check it out. Uh, now, um, Robert, one other thing, uh, you use this on a location shoot. Uh, do, you, do you think it'd be better for your workflow for more staying in your studio or more going on location or both? What, what, do you, what are your thoughts on that? I, I think both. Um, it, it's really solid. Like I said, I didn't even add a sandbag to this. I didn't feel like I needed it. But uh, if you really wanted to, to, to make it really solid, uh, the, the light stand I'm using is a Manfrotto sort of uh, average light stand. You know, if you had a heavy duty light stand or a tripod, it would be even better. And if you sandbagged it, it would be even better than that. Uh, it works well, and it's it really designed to break down pretty small. I mean, you think about it, the entire pro kit goes in that bag I just held up, which is, you know, yay big. It's a little bit bigger than a messenger bag. It doesn't weigh much at all. It's very easy to throw that in your vehicle, and you've already got extra light stands and what have you. And if you want a workstation, you've got one. Just yeah. take a few minutes to put it together. And then does that table connect to a 3-8 stud or? It has a, a, a hole on the bottom that you just slip it over your light stand or the, um, I, it doesn't have a threaded adapter to attach to perhaps if you're, you're um, I would thread it directly to a tripod, not a, a ball head or a four-way head, but it, I believe it has a 3-8, uh, I'm sorry, a quarter 20 and a 5-8 uh, threaded insert on the bottom. Give me a moment, let me check. Yep, it does. And it has an Arca Swiss groove on it. I okay, almost cool. overlooked that. So Very it could cool. go, you could slide it right onto your uh, Arca Swiss plate. So it's shooting tethered something you've done for a long time? Uh, I've dabbled with it. It's not a workflow I've really embraced before because most of the time my stuff was a location shoot and uh, it was how soon can you get me a picture. Um, this particular job I'm working on now with the museum, we've been going now since uh, August and we'll probably continue until the money runs out or they get sick of me. Uh, <laughs> so this may go on for another four or five months. Uh -huh. um, so this is tethering, I've, I've played with it before, but I've never spent this much time tethering before. And uh, it's kind of a game changer. And I'll, I'll get into that a little bit more when I get into the software. Uh, I've played around with wireless systems that are included in the Nikon cameras. And I've also used some of the first generation cam rangers. So it's something I've, I've toyed with, but not, not embraced it until uh, testing out this equipment. All right, well, let's go on to the next section then. Okay, well, the next thing I wanna talk about is the Air Direct wireless tethering system. Now they offer two systems and this is their top tier of the two systems um, what you get with this is the unit itself which has a hot shoe and a quarter 20 thread but it doesn't make any connection with your camera it's actually a cold shoe but here's the unit uh, it's powered by an lpe6 style battery very common battery they include a USB charger for the battery, a DC power adapter that you can plug in and power this with an external USB power bank, or you could plug it into a USB wall adapter so you can have continuous power and not worry about the battery. And they include five different short USB cables so that in the box you've got what is almost certainly gonna fit your camera. I can't imagine a camera that does not use one of these cables. Um, I used it with my uh, D850, which uses the, uh, the USB connector. And I tested it with my Z6 and Z7 camera, which uses USB-C connector. The connection port on the unit itself is a USB-C. Uh, also included is the quick start guide. Now, when all of this stuff arrived, the first thing I did was unbox the Air Direct, grab the quick start guide and my I'm, or, uh, iMac, I'm sorry, not iMac, uh, iPad, sorry, a little brain fart there. Uh, grab my iPad and see 
how hard is this thing to get up and running? And I was really pleasantly surprised. It was very swift, uh, very swift to get set up and very quick and easy. And uh, honestly, within a few minutes reading the quick start guide, I was up and running. Um, let's see here. Let me, I've got a few notes here I want to talk about. Now, switches on here, you've got a light for um, power and a light for when you're broadcasting a Wi-Fi signal from this device. Power switch, of course, your USB. On the flip side, you have a selector for 2.4 or 5 gigahertz. Now, 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi carries a further distance, but the 5 gigahertz transfers data a lot faster. 5 gigahertz being the newer of the two, your system may or may not have that. Um, another good reason to have that switch on there is this supports bridging Wi-Fi networks. So you can connect this to your device, then you can bridge this to an external Wi-Fi network so your device can be connected to this and still have internet access. And you need to have this on the same frequency as your Wi-Fi network. So if your Wi-Fi is in five gigahertz, you wanna take advantage of that increased speed and put this on five gigahertz. If your existing Wi-Fi network is 2.4 gigahertz, you've got to switch here to, to switch down to that. There's also a switch on here for mobile or ADU use. If you're connecting this to a mobile device, you put it in the mobile position. If you're connecting to a laptop, you need the ADU position, which I'll talk about a little bit later. Um, let's see now. Tether Tool says the range is up to 200 feet. I did not have an opportunity to test that, although I did try testing it in my house, and I found that I could transfer photos from a couple of rooms away without a problem. So that certainly seems to be more than adequate. Uh, let's see. Uh, like I said, I have some experience with the first generation CamRanger Wi-Fi transmitter, uh, which is a good bit smaller, but this is definitely more robust and feels a lot more solid and better put together and has a much larger battery capacity. Uh, I also was hoping to, uh, to test the limits of the battery capacity, but Honestly, I could never use it in one session long enough to run the battery down. I would just use it until I was, uh, had to move on to something else and I just put the battery back on the charger. So I never did get to, to find out just how long the battery lasts. Uh, it takes about 20 seconds for this to boot from cold. So it's a pretty quick boot up. So that's really all I have to talk about on the device specifically. I will expand on how it connects and how you use it, but that's, that cut, uh, that's the end of my hardware review here as far as that goes. Okay, I want to talk about using the Air Direct and Air Remote, which is their remote app that connects to this on a mobile device. Like I say, I'm using an iPad, uh, so if you have a mobile device, then the uh, uh, connection is pretty typical of what I've seen in other products. You boot this up, when the little blue light quits flashing and goes solid blue, then you know it's transmitting a Wi-Fi network. On your device, you select that Wi-Fi network. So now your device and the AirDirect are paired, then you launch the Air Remote app. Uh, in my testing, thumbnails transferred very quickly with 24 megapixel files and they weren't too shabby even with a 42 megapixel file and that applies to both jpeg and raw files um, if you step out of range with this device you can see now the, the light on there i don't know if y'all can see that it's solid blue so it's it's now transmitting um, if you step out of range and then come bring the camera back into range the thumbnails catch up automatically um, unlike some of the other things i've used where once the connection is broken, uh, you have to reestablish the connection and it's sometimes a little buggy. Um, if either device goes to sleep, either your mobile device or your camera, you simply wake them up and the connection's reestablished automatically. And so that's a, a game changer for me. Um, I have a bad habit of flicking off my camera power when I set the camera down and then I would pick it back up and find that I I had to reestablish all the connection with other devices. Uh, with this one, you just get
give it a moment for everything to warm up and you're back and up and running. Uh, the mobile device uh, offers a live view option and you can trigger the camera shutter release remote from the device and you can set many camera parameters from the Air Remote app. And they include some nice features that are bracketing exposure, bulb, time release, and focus stacking up to 10 images can be done from the Air Remote app. Uh, two features I really, really love in the Air Remote app that I would really like to see them add to the Smart Shooter 4 software, hint, hint, are live histogram and focus peaking. Being able to see what's in focus from the live view in the Air Remote app is awesome. And especially with me doing all this focus stacking, I really wish the Smart Shooter 4 software supported that. Uh, the live histogram on your mobile device is also uh, a wonderful feature that I wish the Smart Shooter 4 shared. Now uh, you can see histogram on photos after you shot them, but as far as I know, it's not in the live view on the Smart Shooter 4 software. So again, some well thought out features on that. Uh, there's a client mode that you enter a passcode and it locks out your mobile device from controlling the camera. So you do this and you hand the iPad or your iPhone to the client. They can see photos as they're being shot. They show up in the thumbnail view. They can tap on them and enlarge them, but they can't mess with anything. Um, I did find a little bit of glitchiness. Uh, everything worked great with the D850, which is a DSLR camera. When I use my mirrorless cameras, um, you can't turn the Air Direct on first and then turn the camera on. The camera won't boot. So you have to boot your camera first, then plug the USB cable in and turn this on. Um, also, if you launch the app, turn on a live view with a mirrorless camera, then take a picture by pushing the shutter button on the camera, everything locks up. It's not a problem with the DSLR camera. It's a mirrorless thing and they're aware of it and they're working on it, which I have to say that's another shout out to Tether Tools. I've spent some time with tech support on several occasions and their tech support has been great. Um, let's see. That really about wraps it up. I want to say, if you're a developer and you're making something like this, working in an environment where there is almost certainly other signals within this frequency spectrum, working with different mobile apps or mobile operating systems, which are continually being changed and updated and making a system that's compatible with multiple cameras, which are continually being replaced with newer models and being changed with firmware. It's a moving target and to expect that it's always going to work with every camera all the time is, is not a realistic expectation. Um, you're working in a very crowded frequency spectrum and so um, it's important, I think, to go into these with the right expectations. Um, I did experience some hiccups with this, but I want to say it has been much more solid and reliable than any other Wi-Fi system I've used. And so it's important to, um, uh, I think, consider those things when you establish your expectations. Uh, there's no better Wi-Fi that I've used. So, so Robert, I'm open to questions. So Robert, you were you were, and you were were you sending just JPEGs, or you were doing RAW and JPEG the whole time, or? Yeah, and actually, that's I'm glad you asked that. That's another little glitch in the system. In preferences on the Air Remote app, there's a toggle switch for ignore raw files. And so if you activate that and then go back to the thumbnail review, it still downloads JPEG and raw. Now to the right hand side of the screen, you hit, there's a little button that says all and you tap that and it brings down JPEG or raw. If you tell it JPEG there, it will actually ignore the, uh, the raw files, but telling it to ignore raw files in the settings for the app doesn't work. There's, there's a little bit of a glitch there. At least I experienced that with my mirrorless camera. So you can turn that off, but it has to be done in the 
the screen where you access the thumbnails. And then I'm, I really like the fact that they're using LP E6s batteries. That's such a common and a cheap battery. That's a, I love it. It's not a super expensive battery you have to buy because you'll need several of them. Right. And, you know, the idea, again, that they've, you probably already have these batteries. If not, good Lord, you can go on Amazon and get a pair of batteries and a charger for like $18, $20. I mean, they may not be the greatest batteries, but they're universally available, cheap, and have a pretty decent capacity for the, for the size. And so, um, like I say, it's, you may get this and get out in a situation and you may have some challenges. That's just the nature of Wi-Fi. Um, what they've done with this is really impressive. And like I say, it far exceeds my experience with those systems. How much time did you get off of one battery? I never really got a chance to test that out. What would happen is I would get the system up and running and I'd walk around and I'd click some pictures and the thumbnails come in fast. I mean, really fast. Um, I never ran it down. I, I, I got bored playing with it before I ever ran a battery down. Um, so it's pretty doggone good. I can't tell you what the, what the time period is. Uh, I would guess I've used it as much as an hour at a time without an issue. Now, when I popped the battery off, it was pretty warm. So that, it was probably being worked pretty good. That may be the limits of it. I don't know. So, and then the air direct is for going to your computer. Uh, does that also go to a tablet or do you, is there a different unit that goes to a tablet? No, no, no. This goes to either a mobile device or a computer. And uh, I want to talk about if you connect to a computer, you connect with something called the ADU or Air Direct Utility. And actually, that's the next subject I'm going to talk about. Let's do it. All right. So now with the mobile device, you connect directly to the Air Direct and then you launch their app. On a computer, you need a go between piece of software. And that go between is the ADU or Air Direct Utility software, which is a free download. Uh, and I want to say the ADU for Mac Catalina is still in beta. And that's what I used was the beta version. Um, when I first installed it, I couldn't get it to work properly. Um, I sent an email to Liz and said, I'm having problems with this. And in no time at all, I got a call from their tech support and we worked it out pretty quickly. It's a known issue. Uh, there's some security settings in Catalina that I think it sees this device as something that wants to connect to a USB uh, and it wants to give it permission. And so there's, there's a quick little fix for that. I'm sure once it comes out of beta, that will be resolved. But I couldn't resist the opportunity to plug their tech support for being very responsive and awesome to work with. So you boot this guy up. You launch the ADU software on your laptop or desktop computer. You go to settings and you choose the AirDirect Wi-Fi and the ADU software sees that a connection has been made. Now, it will tell you if you've accidentally left the switch on mobile device, it'll tell you, switch it to ADU mode. So it's, they even thought of that. Uh, like I said, we photographers, or at least I tend to be a little airbrained sometimes. So uh, I'm glad they thought of that. And if you do have it in the wrong position, the ADU software prompts you to switch it. You switch it, then you reestablish the connection. So your, your computer is connected to this Wi-Fi now you have the option of bridging to an external Wi-Fi network. And so you do that few simple steps and your computer is connected to your external Wi-Fi network and this at the same time. Now, one shortcoming that they're aware of and they're working on is when you join that external network, there's provision for you to type in a password for that external network. If that external network requires a username and a password, it doesn't know how to handle that. If that external network puts up a splash screen and wants you to, to type something, it doesn't handle that. Um, I talked to Tether Tools about that. They're working on it. So uh, that may come down the road. Hey, splash screens have been the bane of every wireless photographer's life for forever. It's just... Well, like I say, they're working in an almost impossible environment to offer Wi-Fi connectivity between cameras and mobile devices and PCs. There's so many variables there. Um, so, and once you do that the first time, uh, on my laptop, 
I just launched the ADU software, select this Wi-Fi network. It automatically bridges to the network I was already bridging to. Don't have to type in a password the second time around. Boom, you're up and running. It, it really is pretty slick. Uh, let's see. And if you go to the Tether Tools website, they have an extensive list of third-party camera control software. So you've got your, your laptop talking to this, which is connected to your camera. Now you need some software to be able to do something. The ADU is up and running and keeping the, the connection up. Uh, they have a, a great list and you can go in there and say, I'm using a Nikon camera and I'm using this operating system and it will automatically say, here's the four different things that different uh, software packages you can use. Um, so their software is called Smart Shooter 4. And so it's, it's good that they list other software vendors out there so you can have a complete comprehensive list of what all your options are depending on your operating system and your camera. Um, so that pretty much wraps up my review of connecting wirelessly between a camera and mobile device or computer using the Air Direct. So I'm I open to questions. For those that, for those that um, may think, oh, I don't need to tether, I'm telling you that tethering to your laptop, I'm sorry, to your tablet for a client to sit on a shoot and just watch the photos come in, it's a, it's a game changer. It makes your life so much easier. They can't look at the back of your, your camera screen and figure out if the photo isn't sharp or everything like that. But if they have a tablet, it makes things so much easier. And then the other thing is, is you get them away from you, far away, so they can be at, you know, do what they need to do at a distance. Uh, I think that that right there is the most important thing that people need to, to do, is make sure that you can, you can stream your photos to, to a tablet whenever you're working with a client or an art director. It makes life on set so much easier. This Absolutely. Is so important Absolutely. in COVID times too. Yeah, that's it. Six feet now, away holding up your camera doesn't work, but it's, it's become a COVID purchase. Finally, call, call your call your accountants. You got to do it. Um, and then Gabe was asking, how many devices can be connected at once? Can the photographer have a laptop connected at the same time a designer is also connected, or like a laptop and a tablet connected at the same time? It might be a question. I can't answer that one, Scott. Well, no, actually, because you have to choose either going to the laptop or to a mobile device. Okay, That's so it's true. either or. Yeah, so either either or on that one. And you could go to multiple laptops at the same time? I haven't tried that. That's a good question. Yeah. Well, see, you get a straight answer. That's, that's what I that's love good. about these guys. <laughs> that's great. I, yeah, I just think it would be... I'm going to try that right after this call. <laughs> <I'm just gonna laughs> I think Gabe was talking about, like, it'd be nice for you to have it with your laptop on, tethered. I mean, right next to you, and then a designer is off site or elsewhere in the room, and they can also look at it. So that's just, you know, again, it's a COVID, it's a COVID thing. It's something we didn't really worry about before, but now it's becoming more important. So that's great. Uh, Scott, while I've got you, on, and, and Jaron, that was a great question. It reminds me of something I skimmed over in my notes. Um, I did find when this is connected to a mobile device, Playback, trying to hit the playback button to review a picture on the back of my camera. It seemed to sometimes work with the D850 and never with the mirrorless. Is that, am I asking it to do too much or is that a glitch I'm experiencing with them? Um, just to view the image on the back of the camera? Right, uh, to view it on the back of the camera while you're sending thumbnails, I, I could not get that to work uh, consistently. Um, Honestly, I don't have an answer for you at the moment, but I will try that out as well. Okay. I just thought it might be handy to, and I'm so glad you brought that up, Jaron, to have the client standing over yonder with the iPad. I'd like to see the image too. And uh, it seems like I could get it to work sometimes with the DSLR and never with a mirrorless. Well, John Scott also made a good suggestion. If you're connected to a MacBook, you could mirror the screen of the, to an iPad on it using an app. So you That's could have it going to your laptop and then they could have a tablet 50 feet away so they don't cough on you so yeah that that's a good that's a good suggestion awesome well what what are you gonna talk about next robert all right well i want to talk about the smart shooter software now like i said i got to expend many 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 hours using the uh pro tethering kit table the 
USB connection and a Smart Shooter 4 software. And to me, I don't care how limited your budget is, at the very minimum, go buy yourself a cable and download the Smart Shooter software, which the Smart Shooter software is $64.95. I mean, it's so affordable, it's a no-brainer. Um, many, many years ago, I purchased Nikon's Camera Control Pro 2 software when it came out. I actually had the Pro 1. Uh, I was using remote cameras for, for sports, and uh, what I was doing was connecting with a USB cable, then a Cat5 adapter to Cat5 cable, which you could run, make a long run of that, then back to USB to my laptop. I was triggering the camera with a pocket wizard because it's too laggy to trigger the camera for sports through an app. Uh, but I was getting my images over this USB Cat5 connection and changing camera settings if I needed to from the app, but it worked out great. So I, I have many years of experience with the Nikon Camera Control Pro 2 software. Uh, I've also dabbled a little bit with Helicon Stacking's remote, tether, uh, remote software, and I've played around a little bit with Lightroom with their built-in tethering software. Uh, even though you can now get the Nikon software for free, Smart Shooter 4 is my new favorite tethering software by a very wide margin. It is awesome. Um, it's everything you need to be able to do in a very simple and efficient layout, and it's rock steady. I've run it now three days, eight hour days at the museum shooting photos and never had a problem. So, I mean, I, I can't say anything better than that about it. Um, by default, it comes up with uh, your camera controls down the left side. You have an info window, a loop window, uh, a live view window, a preview window, and a film strip underneath. Uh, it, they have several built-in scripts, uh, which are really handy. You can launch one of these scripts, and they include aperture bracketing, bulb time lapse, delayed triggering, focus stacking, HDR, HDR time lapse, ISO bracketing, a shutter button, a shutter speed bracketing, a slave camera script, and a time lapse script. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I'm your, sure um, that now. yeah, thank you for bringing that up. All your controls for your camera are down the left side, very logically laid out. The film strip you see there at the bottom of the screen is awesome. Uh, the preview, nice and big in the center of the screen. And if you bring up one of these scripts, they appear in the column on the right hand side and you can have several scripts open there also yeah there you go that's a different view of it um, so I had my laptop set up on this table and then connected by a USB cable I have my camera on a copy stand and I've got a uh, uh, an LED light panel underneath the coins I'm photographing I've built a little acrylic pedestal and so the light comes up through that acrylic pedestal. I've got everything else blacked out and uh, the coin sits there and I've got axial lighting rig set up on my camera. So I've got the, um, the coin lit from the same axis as the lens and it's floating on white and it worked out very nicely. Uh, one of the things I really like about using the tethering software is I'm separated physically from the camera. I'm controlling the camera from my laptop. I'm triggering the camera from the laptop. I'm not touching the camera. So vibration is not an issue. Uh, the stacking software is awesome. I just went in and set it for the minimal distance between images because some of these coins I'm photographing are smaller than a dime. Um, I tell it I want to shoot 30 shots and say go and it just controls the camera and shoots them. I see the previews come through. Uh, it does a fantastic job. It, it, uh, I couldn't say enough good things about it. And like I said, I ran it for days and had no problems. Yeah, I cannot imagine. I mean, this, this came at a perfect time and we were going to shoot the coins later, but because I had this uh, hardware and, and software, uh, we kind of bumped the coins up in our workflow. And I cannot imagine doing this job without this hardware and software. I mean, it, it is a game changer. I'm a 100% I'm a convert to tethered shooting now. Uh, with something I always thought, eh, whatever. Do yourself a favor, download the software, buy one of their USB cables. At the very least, you'll, you'll be hooked. 
Um, having said that, and as much as I love the Smart Shooter 4 software, I do have a wish list. Oh, here we go. All right. I already mentioned this. Live histogram would be nice, and I would die to have focus peaking in this. I did have to reshoot a coin where I started my stack a few, I don't know what measurement, uh, less than a millimeter too high, and I missed the, the top of a coin, um, and I had to go back and reshoot that. Uh, being able to have focus peaking, especially for shooting focus stacking, would be awesome. You know, you'd, I'd be able to adjust the lens until I saw the focus plane move above the object, tell it to focus, and you can adjust whether it focuses closer to the camera or further away from the camera. I had it set to start at the near point and shoot further away. And being able to look at that last preview and know that you got past your object all the way through focus peaking would be awesome. Um, there are a few things that I can control on my Nikon mirrorless camera through Nikon Camera Control Pro 2 that Smart Shooter does not offer. On Smart Shooter 4, there's a tab for mirror lockup for DSLR but I'm not able to switch my mirrorless camera between mechanical and electronic shutter modes in the app or in the, uh, the software. That's a feature that the Nikon camera control offers. Uh, Nikon camera control also will show blown out highlights on the camera preview. It would be a nice feature to have in Smart Shooter 4. Uh, I can also choose different color spaces and uh, measure for preset white balance through the Nikon software. I cannot do that through Smart Shooter 4. Again, it would be a nice feature. Everything you need is there. This is a wish list. Um, if you change where images are stored, your choices are memory card, computer, or both. If you change it in the control interface that you just showed us a moment ago, Jaron, it's not a sticky. If you change it and then the next day you relaunch that software, it goes back to both. If you change it in preferences, the pull down menu, it's, it stays put. Minor glitch, but just be aware of it. Okay. Um, let's see here. Another thing I would like to see. On the right hand side, when you bring down the focus stacking script, it shows a status in there and it has the word ready in green little words. When you're shooting, it switches to shooting and shows that in yellow. And when you're finished, it says finished in green. The typeface is not terribly large. And because I'm using a mirrorless camera in silent shutter mode, I don't have any audible indication the camera's shooting or not. And more than once I reached in and grabbed a coin when it was still shooting away. Uh, I would love it if that typeface that indicates ready, shooting, or finished were larger. And I would like to see a countdown. If it said shooting 16 of 30, 17 of 30, 18, that would be nice. And I wish I had the option to have it make a tone when the stack is finished. Because the, I'm shooting long enough that you, you pick up your phone and you're looking at Facebook and then you look over, it's finished, and you're like, well, how long has it been finished? I, I wish it would make a little tone at the end when the stack is done. Like I said, this is this is a nitpicky wish list, but I've got uh, I've got about 700 more coins to photograph, so I figured I'd throw it out there. Um, another limitation that I that I brought up and they're aware of and working on is Smart Shooter 4 can only have one destination on your disk that it writes files to. As I said, I'm working with two external hard drives, one for me, one for the client. What I did as a workaround is I opened up Photo Mechanic and ran a live ingest on Photo Mechanic. So Smart Shooter 4 is putting files on a folder I put on my laptop desktop. Photo Mechanic is watching that folder and transferring images to the two external hard drives. Now, thankfully, everything Smart Shooter 4 and Photo Mechanic played together wonderfully and I never had any problems. It would be nice to have that built in natively. Um, the only other problem I experienced is the film strip function. It's really great as you shoot in Smart Shooter 4, you see the latest thumbnail appear on the left and the other ones slide over. Um, it works great. 
until you've shot two or 3,000 images and then it hangs up and doesn't update properly. And I would grab it and slide it over and I can see the newest thumbnail there, but when I let go of it, it rolls back about 40 images. Um, I only encountered that one after shooting thousands of images, but just, just to, to let y'all know, that was, uh, that was something I ran into. Um, hands down, the best remote camera control software I've used so far though. Awesome. Well, I, I don't see any questions, but I did want to add that looks like on their website, there's a 30 day trial for free. Uh, so you, you can even just use your own cable and, and uh, try out the software. I mean, it, uh, if you're going to be tethering, try out theirs because it's definitely a solid a software and, and uh, it's good to hear that it's so reliable. So that, go check out the website. I put a link here in the, in the chat box. Okay, Robert, what, what else did you want to talk about on? Well, I see I'm running way over, but I just want to, I'm going to make this quick. I want to talk about their tech support. Okay. Um, I had problems getting the, uh, uh, ADU software up and running. And, and like I said, it is in beta. Uh, I emailed Liz, they called me right back, got it taken care of. Uh, I made some suggestions, some of which I've shared today on things I'd like to see in the software. And they found out many of them they're aware of, many of them they're working on. They were very receptive to the input. Uh, I got everything up and running at the museum, shot test shots under different lighting scenarios, showed them to the client on the laptop. They said, we like the axial lighting the best, set all that up, got ready to shoot, it quit working on me. The camera would power up, the app would launch, the app would see there's a Nikon Z6 camera, but it would not control the camera. Of course, this is happening in front of the client. I called tech support, left a message. Within minutes, they called me back. And they said, let's try this, let's try that, let's try the other. We went through methodically tried everything. Turns out I bought a AC adapter off Amazon that pops into the battery compartment. We unplugged that, plugged in a battery, everything works. I switch back to the AC adapter, it's fine, it's worked for days. Don't know what happened there, some little power surge, something angered that little AC adapter. But the fact that uh, they called me back so quickly, they were extremely patient. Um, they work with me. We identified the problem. They're going to add that to their, uh, their troubleshooting list from now on. Uh, I could not see better things about their tech support. Um, it has been terrific. Uh, so I, I kind of went through and gave everything a grade. So the pro tethering or the uh, tethering pro kit with rolling tripod stand. A plus, love it. Smart Shooter 4 software, solid A plus plus. It's my new favorite by a long shot. Air Direct Wireless Tethering System, I'm gonna give it a B plus. You're working in a tough environment with a lot of variables. Um, I, I think it's what you've accomplished with that is impressive and far exceeds what I'm seeing other manufacturers achieve. Uh, the Air Direct, utility which is still in beta again b plus works great took a little help from tech support but it's still in beta i'm sure that will be an a before it's done with and uh, the air direct remote app i'm going to give it a b because there's still some mirrorless nikon mirrorless issues that need to be worked out tech support a plus these guys are awesome well I, i'll tell you testimonial and tech support i mean we all have had bad experiences in this industry trying to get help and for them to call you right back and and it seems like they've been really responsive and uh that's that that says a lot about the company absolutely well, is there anything else? yeah any, any anything else you'd like to add i'm good how about you guys i i i i don't know if you you're not watching the chat but uh matt kishore would like to have a chat with you about a blog post i think uh, i think we'd love to see your setup in the in the library in the museum and and uh everything in action so he will be, he'll be stalking you soon. Happy to do it. Awesome. Well, we're, we're grateful for, for uh, you sh sharing that with us today and putting in such detailed effort into your review. I'm just gonna go ahead and share my screen real quick again. I do wanna remind people uh, that we have a very special deal. Here we go, it's coming up here. Uh, special deal, 20% off on all the Tether Tools products through Roberts. So definitely something to take advantage of until October 22nd. 
Uh, and this is a great time for you to be looking at your year end spending and uh, this will be something that will help you on your shoots. So thanks again for joining us today and we'll see you next month on UPAA Live.